In this FileMaker training video, we're going to go over the quick search find methods for either lists or portals. And you have a couple of options. There's a boring way and there is a super terrific ultimate way of doing this. And inevitably, it comes down to the most important thing. And no, it's not electricity or indoor plumbing, air conditioning, and all of those things that might seem to be important when it comes to your solution. The most important thing is user experience. Now, after that, the next is user experience. But then you can move on to things like user experience and so on. I think you get the idea. Users are kind of spoiled in a lot of senses and they are used to doing things a certain way. In YouTube, for example, when they start typing, you get recommendations as fast as you type. They are there. You backspace. There's the information very quickly, whatever you want to type. If you go into Google and do the same thing, you start typing and you get your recommendations. If it's nothing, there are no recommendations. It's empty and it's instant as you are going back and forth. So that is what you want to keep in mind. This is what users are expecting, at least in 2019. We have some choices now in our current solutions, like for pop-ups. So just have favorite colors here. If I start typing in green, it kind of shows up, but I can't backspace uh, very well. It's not quite the same. So it has some options and benefits. The drop down list, if you start typing, it highlights it also. But you, if you backspace, now we're completely out of that. There is an auto part where if you type in red, it filters those nicely. But if I want to backspace, now I've lost all of those options. So it's not quite what we are expecting in a software, but here is a possibility. Now this is the built on regularly included nodes, which is kind of generic. And that is something like the quick find. So this quick find is an excellent tool. You type in, it doesn't give you the suggestions. So you have to hit enter but it did shrink down the list very quickly and it searches on all of these. So that can be very helpful, but if you hit backspace, you are back to where you started. So you can't just start typing and expect something. And then there's the problem if your solution actually eliminates that whole bar altogether. If you don't use that in your custom solution, now you don't have that quick find. So we want to have a different option and we'll just demonstrate how this works when you start typing in you want it to respond immediately and notice right away the user can see which fields are matching this response if i backspace then the list is growing and shrinking as expected if we type in mark we see those and then there's Marco, Marcos. It is instant forwards and backwards. That's the kind of experience that we're looking for. So let's go under the hood and take a look and see how we do this. First and foremost, we have some fields here. We have our super terrific ultimate adaptive research tool field, which is global and it's text. And all of these fields need to be indexed because when you do a search on a field, it's going to index that to speed up the results. So this is very simple, very straightforward. There is a script trigger on this global field. And it's important that it is the on object modify. You might be very tempted to use the on object keystroke and we'll actually show you what happens when we do the on object keystroke. And I'm going to do the raw version of the script just so you can see why we have to make some adaptations to it. So the, the three main components are setting this variable here to that and doing a find the quick find on the variable 
and then going to the field. You could do a quick find on that field, but there's some other things we're going to want to do later. This is the final version, which you see there's the set variable, there's the second step, and there's the go to field, but we're gonna make some modifications. So let's see what it looks like without those modifications, just so you can get an idea if in your solution it's not quite working as expected. So I'm gonna start typing and right away, there's an error that it's not valid. We'll put in a T, okay, there we go. And there's Stu A, so that's kind of fast. However, this does not match this. There is no Stu A, it's Stu B. So when you use that on object keystroke, it's actually only searching these first three. You're missing this final one, which has to do with the order of the script triggers. So if you have seen that portion in our FileMaker certification course, then it'll make more sense to you, but otherwise you'll wanna see that, check that out with that graphic to help you understand that. You also have the problem of once it becomes gibberish, it says no records match the field, and yet we're seeing 587 records. That's not what we would expect in that feature. So that's why we had to make some of these changes. And when we cleared it, we would expect to see what? 587 or all of them, if there's nothing in the search criteria. So let's look at that script and why we made those changes. And I will just reset this. We're going to take off the keystroke. We're going to put it on to the correct one. And let's look at this list filter. First, we're setting the minimum length, and this will be important a little bit later. So you can see that maybe you don't want to do the search if it's less than three characters. What's the point? It's just an S or a T. Uh, maybe you want to just let them type until they get a certain number of characters. Then, of course, set error capture on so that they're not going to see those errors. If there's nothing found, we want to uh, take control of that specific part. And then I set a timer so you could see just how fast it was. And I, it was a lot faster than I expected. So here we set our filter. And now we get to where we're going to actually filter some things with this variable. If it's empty, then we don't wanna do a search. We actually want to show all the records and get out. So that's the first step that we're going to do here. Next, we want to get rid of the return character that's at the end. And maybe you don't, maybe you want to keep that return character. And I'll just demonstrate that. Now, even if we do the on object modify, but let's do raw instead of the filter. Let's see what happens when we keep that return character in. So let's say we're gonna do stew. We type in stew and that return character is not what we would expect. We expected something totally different. So we wanna modify that, get rid of that, uh, as well as any other characters that maybe your users are used to in typing. And you can do that one of two different ways. You have the substitute version here where any return character, you're just gonna substitute for nothing. And that works. This, since we're doing the modify, I know it's going to be the last character that was typed. So I can actually just get rid of the last character that was typed and return it back and then set that field. So this is why we use that variable so we can do some things with it. And then we're gonna to commit to the records so that that value uh, stays there. And here is the minimum length that we wanna jump out and not even do the search if it's less than two characters in this instance. It's not worth uh, the time for that. Then we do our quick find. And here is where you would refresh the portal if you're actually going to use this with filtering portals. And now we want to eliminate any residual records. If we don't have any results, we want it to be empty. We want to show nothing because there was nothing that was found. So we do that here in this section. We have our end timer 
and then we go to the field. You could add a sort if you want, but generally speaking, they know what they're looking for and they're shrinking that list down very quickly. So the time needed to sort all of those records is unnecessary. And then you maybe go to the first record and then we exit the script. So those are the bare bones part of that. A couple of added options, which you may want to tweak those depending on your specific solution. I will say though, this is on a flat file solution. So all of these fields are in one table. There's nothing related here and that makes it very, very fast. But we do have a lot of solutions where the addresses are related. It's multiple addresses. And so how would this tool work? in that specific scenario. Well, let's just check and see. So now in this instance, you can see because of this yellow magnifying glass that these are related fields. We pull this up, it is contact addresses. We still have, these are the same. We still have the same script trigger on the global filter there. So now let's test this out on related records and I typed everything and it is slow. We have a problem with the related records. It is too much for instant, especially when there's 350,000 records, it is just going to take too long. But there is a way that you can get around it if instead of doing related, we actually turn it into a local search and we do this by concatenating the address found here. We'll go to the addresses section. I do an address is fine. It's not a calculated field that will take longer to do. It is a text field, but it is auto entered of a calculated value concatenating all of the address information in the related table. But then in the contacts table, we do an auto enter again for the text field. And this time we're doing a list of that address combined field. And this is important because it actually turns it into a local field. And I forgot to show one other thing back here on this. If we do STU, then it actually did search and it got to where it was very fast. The smaller this found set is, then the faster it will get. So there's an A, that was 0.012. Even on the related ones, it can be fast, which is why decreasing it to only search if there's three or more can really speed that up. But notice when we typed in just STU, this top record is showing up as relevant, but it's not. There's nothing in here that has stew in it until we recognize that actually in the address, there are three related addresses. It is actually seeing the stew in Sturgis, but on this layout, it can only display the top related record. So it doesn't give you the full results that you're looking for. But when you make this local auto enter, now we'll just start from scratch and we'll type in Stuart and there it was very fast as we would expect. There's backspace very fast, even with just the two characters. Maybe you want to see everything in Maryland. So there's all your Maryland ones, but notice this isn't Maryland until we click in and see it. there it is. And here is just a medical doctor it actually has nothing to do with this part. And this is just a uh, simple conditional formatting. Um, and they are all the exact same formula with this pattern count of self by using self, I can copy this formula and use it in each one of these. There it is self again. So it's just copy paste on all of these Field. So we're able to turn a related record into a local record. And yes, you may have to add some scripting on the form part of this when you go to the actual form where 
the data is entered and modified on the addresses. You may have to do some script triggers there to reset that auto enter field. But if speed is your most important factor in this search, then it's well worth that extra time for the script trigger. So what about with filtered portals? And in this scenario, we've got a filter with an X join in the relationship here. So we're going to see all of them and we are filtering by that global field. We're using that same kind of pattern count here. And we'll see how fast that is for this specific scenario with MD. I'll just shorten that. I typed in Stuart and we get the beach ball because this filtered portal is really slow trying to accomplish this. But we can accomplish the same thing by doing it just a little differently. So let's look at a different example. And this time we'll do the same thing. We'll type Stuart. That was really fast, instant. And notice even as we're going backwards, see the, the sort at the top is actually filling in and we're getting our chooser picker list here. And that's because in this instance, we're using a master detail list. So all of these uh, are the same as all of these the contacts table. And this is actually doing a quick find on these, not the portal. It just looks like it's filtering this portal, but it's actually just doing a quick find on these fields. Next, we're going to demonstrate how this will work on a server. So we're on our same layout and we have our 350,000 records and let's see how it does. Not too shabby for traveling all the way across the US here. You can see typing in, it's not exactly instant but this 0.72 is not too bad. And even backspacing, we're still shrinking this list as we go. And we'll type in mark and see that that is still pretty good when it comes to this size on a server. If we go to our other layout where we have this master detail search, let's try that. And we type in Stuart. We have a bit of a lag there at the first part, but it does seem to go well. And this is where, see how at the two, it's not, or the T, it's not doing anything until we hit the U, then it's searching because in our script, I changed that to be a value of three. And when it comes to the server part, that seems to be a lot better to only have three characters. So even on a server, it can do very well. And then the last example would be uh, just a real life example so that you can see it's not just theory, it's not just it might work, it should work. In our core CRM Pro file, we actually use this same technique on the portal search. And in this instance, we have companies related to contacts. You can see there's 350,000 companies. And if you look at the tables, we look at, uh, this is the one with the companies, the additional contacts has a lot of records as well, but just searching through all of these, when we type it in, there it is very fast uh, on the portal, just exactly the same way that we do in theory. So I hope that helps. I hope that gives you some ideas of ways to make the user experience a whole lot better and similar to what they're used to and just make it a wow factor when they jump in to do something that it is wow. They love it and are excited and they aren't wasting time on beach balls or other things. So be sure to like and subscribe and check out our other videos on the channel. And of course, visit us at ProductiveComputingUniversity.com for our more advanced courses like the FileMaker Certification Preparation.